leadership embodiment level one gives you all the key principles and tools to access the state of centeredness and flow. After the training, everyone can fly with these tools. And at the same time, it is also a path. It's a path that takes practice. It's a path that takes training, that deepens with time. So let me expand a little bit on the notion of path. In my view, all forms of true wisdom, of wise existential development teaching, eventually they all point and lead to a similar direction. One of being less driven by egotic conditioning, and instead they, they provide ways to become more selfless, more inclusive, more connected to higher inspirations. And in this way, leadership embodiment meets all the other essential paths, but it also has specificities that I would like to point out. One specificity of leadership embodiment as a path is that we work on the body and with the body. Uh, that is huge. That is the, quote, embodiment part. We learn to track and recognize our posture and what's going on in the body because the body reacts first. And the sooner we notice, the easier it is to have a choice and to change our state. The body is a shortcut to change state. Also, embodiment means that the work, unlike most training, is not just intellectual. It's not just about understanding ideas, understanding principles, no matter how beautiful and attractive these ideas may be. It's really about integrating them in our being, starting with the body, in the way we show up, in the way we appear, in the way we relate. So, for example, it's not just about talking about inclusivity, it's about being inclusive, making others feel included, even and especially when they don't behave the way we like them to, they are annoying. And that takes specific exercises, that takes specific practices, and that takes repetition. Now, compared to other embodiment approaches, and there are many good ones around, another specificity of leadership embodiment is that we're not just working with the posture, not just working with the sensation of the inner body, but we are also learning to work with the richness of space, space that is always present, space that can handle whatever comes up inside and outside. We are learning to connect to space, to access resources in space, and that is a very big, powerful area that also takes practice because it is very new. It's very new for most people. So let's look at the, the training part now for people who are new to this, but also for people who have already had the introduction of level one. The most important training is the training that you do, the training you do by yourself, the training you do every day. But at the same time, we need to acknowledge that this is very difficult for most of us to self-train especially when it's about reprogramming, reprogramming our habits and reprogramming our nervous system. Uh, there's a natural mental and um, physiological resistance. The body does not like change. And as a result, uh, we all tend to fall back to our usual comfort zone. Many people who have participated to level one say they use the key principles that, they are, that are easiest to them, those that they remember because they are quick and make a big immediate uh, difference. And at the same time, they recognize that there's a large part that has not been cultivated. So that part is just waiting for you, for you to use. And this is why we need to revisit, we need support, and why we need others to get feedback. Um, and that's the reason why we're offering a le leadership embodiment level two for those who had the first introduction in level one. Level two is an occasion to we connect, we connect uh, with the path to deepen your understanding of what it's about, what it takes to exercise in a variety of challenging situations and, and to be challenged in a safe place so that you can strengthen your ability to lead with flow. And for those of us who like programs, let me say a little bit about the, the kind of situation that you will um, experience in level two. You will learn to relate to space, as I said, and work with space uh, and with greater inspiration to address challenges with more ease. You will develop timing and flexibility. You'll learn to go with the situation before responding or taking action. You'll learn to say no or no, not now. You'll practice 
advocating, speaking up, taking a stand in the face of conflict and repeated uh, disagreement. You also will learn to make the um, difference between speaking from the head, speaking from the heart, speaking from the core, and from a centered space. Uh, you will also, this way, learn how to align a little more a body with speech to become more truthful and more effective at influencing your environment. Um, finally, you will study your relationship to success and how success can be often overwhelming because the body prefers not to change. Uh, so you will learn how to strengthen your capacity to tolerate greater success, which means more exposure and which means greater intensity. You'll discover the exercise of turning the room. It is a wonderful practice and posture that will help people change from having a single perspective to adopting a panoramic view of a situation, what we call, you know, big picture. Um, you'll discover the challenging and deeply satisfying connect and release exercise, uh, often called randori, it's borrowed from the martial arts. Um, it's an exercise that is almost an initiation where you will learn how to stay centered and respond to the many demands of many people coming you know, at you one right, uh, run right after the other and learn to still connect fully to each one of them. Uh, you'll also practice with a boken. Um, the boken is a Japanese wooden training sword. It's a very exciting instrument that will teach you to accept and handle more power while remaining centered. It's a very energizing practice, and it's also very much an initiation for, for many people, meaning that there's a, a before and there's an after. And of course, you will review and integrate um, many of the principles of level one. Um, we often hear after level two, people say, oh, now I understand what leadership embodiment really is about. There was a lot in level one that I thought I had understood, but I had not, or things I had simply just not heard. So if you've done the first part, please do yourself a favor and do the world a favor, do the second part. The world really needs leaders that are courageous, that are discerning, that are compassionate. Um, so I really invite you from my heart to join one of the many excellent leadership embodiment teachers for a level two near you. All the programs are on the site on leadershipembodiment.com. If you'd like to study with me, it would be a pleasure. Check out Pierre Guaran or presenceleadership.net. In the fall, there's many level two. There's one in fabulous Grube Louise in the Köln area, organized by Holger Scholz and Kommunikation Lotzen. Also one in the Swiss mountains near Zurich, organized by Miriam Matisse. Later in 2021 in Berlin, thanks to Jutta Weimar. Uh, they all happen to be top teachers in the art of facilitation. Check them out, they are great. Study with them. There are also many level one also, so please spread the word. Life is about learning. Let's learn together. See you there.